So let's go ahead and we'll start on our back today, as we often do. This is sort of like our little meditation before we start moving. And as I've expressed before, really, really actually the foundation for the practice. Because all yoga ultimately is just about awareness. So very often we identify with things that come up for us, thoughts and emotions. And if we identify too strongly with these things, it can often cause a lot of suffering, both for ourselves and for others. So the postures are opportunities for us to take a step back and to try and create a little bit of spaciousness around the experience we're having and our reactiveness to it, our response to it, you might say. So for most people, if they're doing yoga, there will be postures or exercises or things that bring up unpleasant situa you know, feelings, whether it's physical or emotional or an unpleasant thought like, you know, uh, I'm too old to do this, or I'm, I've got an injury, it's not going to heal, I can't do this kind of thing, or whatever it might be, I'm not strong enough. So before we add <laughs> any intensity, let's just see if we can relax back and just notice our thoughts, notice the emotions, notice the sensations in the body. So before we create any kind of intensity, can we just relax with what is? And for some people, the answer is no, right out the gate. <laughs> right away, it's like, no, I don't like, I don't like this. I'm not okay with this. And very often, if that's the case, what you'll find is you're not allowing your body to be still. Chances are you're kind of squirming and moving, and maybe you're like getting up and drinking water during this part. You know, maybe you're like, petting your dog or, you know, some other way of sort of distracting yourself from the moment. And I'm not pointing this out to make you feel bad. I'm just pointing it out so hopefully you can identify if that's what's happening. And so those are pretty harmless ways of trying to avoid the present moment. More harmful ways are actually substance abuse and, um, you know, things like that. So it's a continuum you know, this sort of behavior. And so we just want to, if we can, notice it even if in, in its most uh, innocent form, which is maybe fidgeting or, you know, kind of squirming, wanting to get away from the present moment by taking water, or, uh, getting up from the mat, moving around a little bit. But if we can, we're just really allowing what we're feeling like completely saying yes to our emotions, to our thoughts, to the sensations in our body. And then we begin to add the breath. Now the breath can do two things. It can do both of these things, and they may seem like they're in opposition. As we begin to deepen our breath and we breathe, inhale, belly, ribs, chest, exhale, chest, ribs, belly, Right, that's three-part breathing. Most of you know that. But as we begin to deepen our breath, one thing that can happen is it can begin to regulate how we feel. So if we're feeling a strong emotion, overwhelmed, sometimes that can make us feel more calm and relaxed. So notice if that's the case. Whatever you're sort of feeling, you deepen that breath and you notice, oh, that feels good. I feel more calm and relaxed. The opposite can also be true though, and that's an important thing to understand, that sometimes when we move the breath, it actually stirs up the emotions and the sensations that we're feeling. So it, it's not a cure-all. It doesn't mean that what we're feeling is gonna go away. Sometimes it actually means it's gonna be more intense. So again, if that's your experience, just notice that, allow that, see if that can be okay for now. You can let that emotion 
be more intense. You feel safe enough to allow that. Now, the other technique we use is called ujjayi, which is a kind of an ocean, a fogging a mirror sound. Okay, and that slows the breath and it also calms the nervous system. But again, it too could go either way. Um, if you do it long enough and you do it in the right way, eventually you'll begin to feel calmer and more relaxed. But in the short term, you might actually feel, you know, that could be triggering for you. It could make you feel more agitated. So just do the best you can with that. And again, if you can't do the techniques without feeling agitated, then you just drop them for today. And you can try again at another time. But if you can, keep those techniques going. And then we're just going to bring in our right leg. So we're still breathing in the same way. And we just begin to feel into this right leg. So let the leg be passive. Use your arms. Okay, and you move it all the way to one side, all the way to the other side. Just notice what you feel. Okay. And then from there, if it feels okay, you can begin to take the leg all the way out to the right and see if you find a stretch in the inside of that thigh. And you can move it around a bit. Now, for some people, myself included, that stretch isn't that intense unless we straighten the leg. So you could grab the big toe or the outside edge of the foot and you begin to take it out. And now I feel a more powerful stretch. Now I can do whatever I want with this left leg. So I can lift it, I can move it over to the left, and I'm just trying to facilitate this stretch in here. And I'm not trying to be still. So I can like, you know, do wanna do this, or I can lift and lower the leg, right? Just sort of however you're feeling your way into that part of your body. Now again, sometimes we have strong reactions to sensations in our body. So let's just notice if there is any of that there. Okay, from there we're gonna do one more stretch which is grabbing hold of the foot, grabbing hold of the knee and pulling this shin toward us. Okay, and we're moving, now we're trying to stretch out here. Those are the glutes, rotators. And if you'd like to be a little more aggressive, you can actually wrap the elbows around the leg like so. Now again, notice my left leg. I don't have to keep it there. This would be more gentle. This would be more intense. And this would be probably somewhere in between. So again, I'm trying to wake these guys up. I'm not trying to be still. I am moving. Okay, and then I release that leg back down. And just take a moment again to feel the two legs, the two hips. Do I notice any change or difference? Now, if you're like many people, you completely forgot about the breathing. <laughs> so I'm not pointing that out to make you feel bad. It's very, very common. So it's more common than not. So, you know, you can say that if you forgot, that's normal. That's what's usually going to happen, but that's part of my job as a teacher to remind you. So if you forgot about the breathing techniques, bring them back online, okay? And then let's do the other leg. So bring this leg in, we move it around a little bit. We feel the hip, we feel the leg. What do we notice as we manipulate it? So I definitely feel some tension in this part of my body, for sure, I'm feeling it, okay? So I move it around a little bit. Stretch it out. And then, again, if I feel I need a little more stretch, I can take the leg straighter, and usually that'll do it. So again, I'm not trying to hold still. I am moving and actively working that leg. Those are called your adductors, or groin, right in there in the inside of the thigh. Okay, and then we bring the leg in, and again, we bring it in, this is called external rotation. So I'm externally rotating it. Be very mindful of your knee and your ankle, okay? So there shouldn't, really shouldn't be any sensation here or here. It's all in the, the buttocks, in the glute. 
Let's grab hold of that leg, move it around a little bit. Now again, just notice I'm moving constantly. So later we're gonna hold some stretches and in those stretches we'd like to be still. So there's a time and a place for movement. There's a time and a place for stillness and hopefully we do some of both in this class. Okay, let's release the leg, relax and feel. It's just allowing, giving ourselves permission to feel what we're feeling. And notice if there's some resistance to that, there very well might be. There were, very well might be a part of yourself, a thought or a feeling like, no, I can't allow what I'm feeling right now. And that's okay too, allow that as well. Just acknowledge that and say, okay, there's a part of me that's not okay with this. All right, let's bring our legs in, give them a little squeeze, both together this time. And just a little bit of gentle movement, loosen everything up. And then we'll do a little bit of core here. So hands under the hips to uh, pad your tailbone, basically. Some people, their tailbone presses on the ground uncomfortably when they do this. And then we lift those legs up. Now, as usual, if there's any pain in your back, you're going to bend those knees. That'll take care of it. Otherwise, legs straight. We lift the head and neck. Take a nice deep breath. We exhale, lower those legs. And then you can inhale, bend, extend them up, and exhale again lower. Now, if you want to work a little harder, then you inhale and lift the legs at the same rate that you lower them. Okay, so what most people do is they'll pop the legs up like that and then lower them very slowly. Instead, see if you can lift and lower at the same rate. Now, again, notice if resistance comes in here, right? So can we just allow ourselves to feel the sensation? So they might be quite intense. And again, a thought might arise, I can't do this. This is too much. I need to stop. I'm tired. See if instead of believing that thought and immediately stopping, if instead you can question, is that really true? Do I really need to stop? What do I think is going to happen if I don't stop. What am I afraid of experiencing, right? What is that thought sort of implying about me and my experience? All right, the next time let's exhale about a third of the way down. We're just going to hold. Again, holding is different than moving. They're both really, really important. So we're taking a breath or two here. And then we exhale again about a third of the way down and hold. So the body might be shaking, mine is. And then we exhale just above the ground, holding. Again, might be really intense. Can we allow the intensity? Can we keep breathing with the intensity? Hopefully we can. Good, let's inhale the legs up and we exhale up to seated. Let's transition to a tabletop. So hands and knees, we inhale, lift the tailbone, drop the belly, crown of the head up, exhale, tuck tailbone, round the back, crown of the head down. So as usual, do a few uh, back and forth, right? Then also do a few side to side, just at your own pace, at your leisure. Just take a little bit of time. I'm definitely feeling the side of my hips there, especially on the right side, which is interesting to me because my left side has been bothering me as of late. But right now, I don't feel anything in my left side. It's all in my right side. So again, I didn't know that until I did this. This is why <laughs> these kinds of warm-ups can be really valuable. Just kind of like, ooh, where's my... 
Where is my body talking to me today? Let's tuck those toes and we come into a down dog. And we'll just pedal it out. What do we feel? How can we move in a way that encourages openness in the body? Encourages movement of energy in the body. Just exploring that. Okay, and then when you're done, you're down dog. As usual, hands about shoulder width, fingers spread wide. The chest draws toward the toes, the feet are hip distance, and the heels reach toward the ground. I'll remind you again about that breath. Can you breathe here in that same way? Is that experience any different? And if it is, can you just allow that experience, the different experience, breathing here as opposed to on your back? With the exhale, let's walk our feet to our hands, we come into a rag doll. Feel free to grab that opposite elbow here and dangle. This is a great test of kind of overall back health, I think, because if we have some issues in our back, it's likely to show up here. Maybe not for everybody, but at least for me, it often does. So at least right now, back is feeling pretty good. With the arms relaxed, we'll inhale and roll up to stand. And let's do a few rounds of sun salutations together. So feet touching, if that's possible for you, otherwise parallel is just fine. Inhale the arms up, touch palms and lift the heart. And as you exhale, release into a forward fold. Bring the palms flat if you're able. Let your neck relax as you fold in. The inhale, you can come to your fingertips, lengthening the spine. And as you exhale, you just plant the hands and step to the top of a push-up for plank. Okay, so let's drop our knees for the first push-up. Take a deep breath, exhale about halfway down. Take a breath there, and with the next exhale, come the rest of the way down. And as you inhale, come into cobra. You lift the head, the neck, the chest. Let's keep the hips down, keep the arms bent, and just let the neck be a natural extension of the spine. Now exhale, lowering down, pressing back to a tabletop, and then to a downward facing dog. Alexa, stop. So rude. <laughs> All right. From our down dog, let's inhale to our toes, fill the lungs. We're gonna to exhale to the front edge of our mat. We inhale all the way to the standing back bend. And then let's grab the right wrist and we exhale to our half moon, stretching our side here. Good, inhale back through center, switch wrists. Exhale to the other side, find that length, find that stretch. Inhale back up and then exhale again to a forward fold. We inhale to a half lift and exhale to the top of a push up. So step back. As usual, you can decide here knees up or down, take a deep breath, exhale halfway down, and then inhale, straighten the arms and legs, knees off the ground. All right, this is up dog. And then exhale, pull the feet in as you lift the hips up and back for down dog. Okay, one more. Let's inhale to the toes. We exhale, front edge of the mat. <clears throat> Inhale to the standing back bend. And we exhale to our half moon. Inhale, center, 
Exhale, half moon. Inhale, center, and exhale, chair. So, as usual, chair is a great opportunity to notice resistance, internal resistance. So, this often manifests in the body. So, you've heard me say it before, like clenching the jaw, furrowing the brow, pursing the lips, the shoulders getting really tight and tense. So, you know, the answer isn't this. This isn't, okay, I'm going to relax my shoulders. No, you keep them up, but then see if you can just soften the shoulders, soften the shoulder blades. Still vital, still really alive, intense, but there's an inner softening in the heart, the mind, and in parts of the body that can soften in this position. Good. Let's inhale, stand back up. We exhale to a forward fold. Inhale to the half lift and exhale right to the bottom of your push up if you're able. Inhale for up dog and exhale, do a push up on your way back to the downward facing dog. All right. So we're going to do a modified side plank. Let me see what the best way for me to, to demonstrate that is. First, we'll bring our feet to touch. Then we're going to inhale the right leg up and back. And then we just exhale it about halfway up the mat. You know, it's not going to be the same for everybody, but about halfway. Notice my toes are pointing out there to the side. And then I roll onto the edge of my left foot and I raise the right hand up, okay? Now, if this is too much, you simply drop the bottom knee and straighten the top leg instead. You see my upper body barely moved at all when I did that, right? But if you can, do this one. It's a little more advanced. You're working a little more to hold this position. Looking up, breathing, again, noticing what we feel if we're resisting anything here. And again, it's okay if we are. Just trying to bring awareness to that. Good, we exhale that hand down. Let's inhale that leg up and back. We exhale, lunge. I'm gonna turn for the camera, so you don't need to turn, but I'm gonna turn. Okay, we come into this lunge, and then we'll inhale to this position, which is called skandhasana. Okay, it's an asymmetrical, like, low squat. Okay, now, I'm pointing my toes up. That's probably ideal, but it's okay if your foot's down. What you want to feel is a stretch right in here. Remember these guys from the beginning? Adductors. So we're trying to get in there. The upper body, you can have your hands on the ground. Some people like to bind the leg like that, roll the shoulder back. I really don't care that much what you do with the upper body as long as you feel the stretch in here trying to breathe into that area softening it a bit so this is a posture we'll do quite a bit of today notice i didn't go over to that side of my mat okay i just turned from the lunge now i will turn back okay and then from there, I can inhale the leg up and back and exhale bottom of my push-up and make my way to down dog, okay? Okay, so side two from down dog, feet touch. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale the foot about halfway. And then inhale to the modified side plank, Vashistasana. It's the name of this one, okay? So again, might be very intense for various reasons. This shoulder should be active. So you are actively pressing the ground away. You do not want to collapse into that shoulder. So these muscles are not strong. There might, you might feel a lot there. Okay, just be aware of that. Okay, let's take a deep breath. We'll exhale that hand down. Inhale the leg up and back. We exhale, lunge. Again, I'm going to turn just for the camera. All right, 
So we just lunged and then we inhale to Skandasana on the other side. Now again, you can do this if you want. You don't have to though. You may have to play around to find the stretch in the inside of the leg. So that's what you might see me doing is just kind of like moving my torso and my leg trying to find the best stretch. And then once I find it, I want to take a few breaths there. Good. And then we inhale back to our lunge, right? And then the next inhalation, the leg comes up and we vinyasa back to our downward facing dog. Okay, from our down dog, let's inhale toes. We're gonna to exhale front edge of the mat. And let's inhale up to our standing back bends. We come all the way up and back. And we'll exhale hands to the heart. So let's take a look at some balance here. We're gonna look at uh, Vashistasana or Vashistasana, Vrikshasana, they're both Vs. Okay, so we shift weight to the left foot and the right knee. I am mirroring right now. Okay, this is the most basic shape, looks like that. You wanna take it a little further, bring the foot to the calf, bring the foot to the inside of the thigh. Okay, the knee is back. Okay, and then if you want, you can grow some branches and leaves for your tree. Now notice if, again, there's any difficulty here. It could be strength, flexibility, coordination. When I say coordination, I just mean your sense of balance, your vestibular system, your inner ear. So just allow, without judgment, without thinking it should be any different than it is, right? I think we might have the thought, oh, I'm supposed to be able to balance. Well, some people can't. All right, let's release that side. We'll come in on the other side. So try and find an edge. You know, this isn't the most challenging a balance pose, so you might find that it's all easy, and that's okay. But if you are doing this and you're really bored, then it's probably a little too easy. It's a little too safe, right? So maybe you start to do this and get wobbly. Good. That's kind of what we want. We want to get a little bit, just a little bit out of the comfort zone, the safe zone, the control zone where we know the outcome, we know we can do it. Now again, right now, this is the hardest. So you might know you can do this, great. We'll explore harder things in a few moments, okay? All right, let's release that. We inhale up and back, exhale forward fold. Inhale to the half lift and we exhale bottom of the push up, which I will skip because I will run. I get out of breath if I'm teaching and doing too many of those. Okay, great work everybody. So let's take a look at another side plank. This one is the classic side plank, Vashistasana. So we can bring those feet to touch and then we're just gonna roll to the left. Now you already learned one way of modifying this. So two ways actually. So modify if necessary, otherwise you come into this full expression. And then again, notice my hips are not way up here like this. Does this look like a plank to you? It looks like an arch, right? And especially if I do that, it's like a big arch. So that's not side plank, this is side plank, right? Straight like a piece of wood. Good, we can lift that top leg and exhale lunge, right? And then from our lunge, again, I'm turning just for the camera. We inhale, turn into skandasana, right? Exhale, other end of the mat. Good, and then we'll flow, okay? So we inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Inhale to skandasana. 
and we exhale to the first side again. Let's do that again. We inhale the right leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Inhale to Skandasana. Exhale, lunging at the other end of the mat. One more time. Let's inhale that leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Inhale, Skandasana. And we exhale to lunge at the other side of the mat. Okay, beautiful. From here, we inhale up into a high lunge, a crescent lunge, which is a posture we do quite a bit of. Front foot and knee, straight ahead, knee over the heel. Left hip forward, right hip back, left leg straight, the heel pressing toward the ground, right? And then there's a little bit of a back bend element here. If it's intense, see if you can allow the intensity safely. Just say yes, allow it. If you think you're in danger, you do whatever you need to do. But if you can, just say yes, allow the intensity. Good, deep breath in, exhale, bottom of the push-up. Make your way to downward duck. Okay, so feet touch and we rolled to the right into our full side plank if possible. Now again, you know two ways of modifying it already, so you modify as necessary. But again, notice if you really need to modify or if there's just something in your mind that says you need to. You know, you're afraid, again, of feeling the intensity or something like that. And that's okay. I just want you to notice if that's there. Okay, we can lift that top leg, exhale, lunge, right? And then we inhale to the skandasana. So again, I'm, I'm turning just for the sake of the camera. Then we exhale, other side of the mat. Inhale, the leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Inhale, skandasana, feel the stretch. Exhale, other side of the mat. Inhale, left leg up and back, three-legged dog. Exhale, lunge. Inhale, skandasana. And exhale, back of the mat. One more time. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Inhale, skandasana. And exhale, to the front of the mat. Inhale to a high lunge, Ashta Chandrasana, crescent lunge. So again, when the thought or feeling arises, I need to stop. I need to come out of this. See if you can just, you know, or I need to drop my arms, anything like that. See if you can just question that. What is making me think or feel that way. Is that actually true? What would happen if I held past that point? You know, would I really collapse? Would I really, what would happen? What would be so bad? Good. We exhale, bottom of the push-up, making your way to down dog. So, the thing about yoga is we're trying to create a safe environment where we can bring up these types of feelings and thoughts and begin to question them because later yoga becomes very psychological, dealing with emotions and thoughts, not much less with the body. But bringing awareness to the body is super helpful with that later stuff that we do in yoga. Okay, from here we're gonna to inhale toes, we exhale front edge of the mat. We inhale up to our standing back bend. We exhale hands to the heart. Okay, so you are welcome to repeat the uh, tree pose, which we did earlier. Okay, and again, I really only recommend this if this is really unstable for you, you know, or painful or challenging in some way. 
Okay, if you're pretty much bored here, you know, you know you're going to be able to do it. Again, unless you're injured or you, you're managing something, then I'll encourage you to try and step out of that comfort zone. Like, just see if you can take a step out. So one way we do that today is we take that right foot and we place that into the hip crease here, okay? All right, now I can hold that foot with this hand, but I can also take this hand, maybe reach around and bind the big toe. Let me see if I can get a good grip on it. There we go. Okay. And then I can take this arm up, the free arm, whichever one it is, it's fine. Okay, now you can stay there, but if you feel okay, the next exhale, hinging from the hips, coming forward and down. And this is Ardha Bada Padma Paschimottanasana. So I can have the hand on the ground. I can also grab that ankle. So again, you're welcome to stop at any point where you find a challenge. I can do this, but it's it's challenging, right? There's no uh, guarantee how long I'm going to be able to hold this. See, I have to put my hand down every now and then. Okay, inhale, we'll come back up and exhale, release, take a breath, relax. So hopefully that's clear to everybody. We're, we're looking for an edge. We're looking for a little bit of challenge, getting out of the comfort zone and that's going to be different for everybody. One of the nice things about this working at home like this without, uh, you know, the screens to see one another is other than me, you don't really know what anyone else is doing. So everybody at home might be just holding a tree pose or everyone might be doing what I'm doing. So instead of worrying about what anyone else is doing, pay attention to your edge where you begin to feel the challenge and try and be with that. Breathe there. Good. Let's inhale, we'll come back up. <laughs> Hopefully more gracefully than me and we exhale, we release that. Good. Inhale, standing back bend, and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, maybe a crow, and exhale, bottom of the push-up. Okay, so here we are. Let's take a look at a different kind of side plank. Okay, so we'll bring our feet to touch. We come to the left. Now again, you know three versions of this already, including this one, right? And if you wanna do it a step further here, we bring that leg essentially into a tree pose position. Now again, I may be able to hold this, but my whole body is shaking. So <laughs> it's very challenging still. It's a physically challenging position to relax into, and that's what I'm trying to do. Good, let's exhale that hand down, the foot between the hands. Again, I'll turn just for the sake of the camera, okay? And then from there, I inhale, Skandasana, right? And then exhale, lunge at the other end of the mat. I inhale up into a crescent lunge. Exhale, the hands down. Inhale, the left leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Inhale, Skandasana. Exhale, lunge at the back of the mat. Inhale to crescent lunge. Good, exhale the hands down. Inhale, 
the right leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Inhale to Skandasana. Exhale to the other side of the mat. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, the hands down. Inhale, left leg up and back. Three-legged dog. Exhale, lunge. Inhale to Skandasana. Exhale to the other end of the mat. Inhale to Crescent Lunge. And then exhale to Vidabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Okay, so I drop that back heel to the ground. Front foot and knee pretty much the same, but the pelvis and the chest open up to the left wall. The arms now parallel with the ground, reaching fingertips out, forward and back. Gaze over the front fingertips. Okay, and I see this a lot in class, looks like that. So notice if you're doing that, if you're leaning forward, just bring those shoulders back, bring them back over your hips, okay? Good, take a deep breath, exhale, cartwheel down bottom of the push-up and make your way to down dog. Okay, so side two, we bring those feet to touch. We roll to the right. Okay, so we start with a classic side plank. And then again, if you want to take it a step further, you can bring that foot into position. Good. Let's exhale the hand and foot into a lunge. Again, I'll turn just for the camera. Inhale to Skandasana, right? Exhale to the other side of the mat. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale the hands down. Inhale the leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Inhale, Skandasana. Exhale to the other side of the mat. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, the hands down. Inhale, the leg up and back. Exhale and lunge. Inhale, skandasana. Exhale, other side of the mat. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, the hands down. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Inhale to Skandasana. Exhale, lunging at the other end of the mat. Inhale to a crescent lunge and exhale to a warrior two. Now, another thing I see a lot in yoga class looks like this, okay? Or even like that, okay? That's the tired warrior. <laughs> And what that might point to is a lack of belief in our own strength, our own power. So notice if there's, again, resistance here. This position requires a certain level of power and strength. And if we don't think we have it, we're probably going to do something like this. Oh, I'm too tired. That's too hard. Why are we holding it so long? Right? So if we're holding this and that thought comes up, oh my God, how long are we gonna hold this? It's too much, it's too hard, my arms are getting tired. Again, be willing to question, to look. Like, is that really true? Do I really need to drop my arms here? Or is it just an unpleasant sensation? All right, so again, holding space for that expands our comfort zone. It actually means there's more of life we can experience comfortably, calmly, sanely. Good, let's take a deep breath and then we exhale, cartwheel down, bottom of the push up. We make our way to down dog. Okay, from our down dog, let's inhale to the toes. We exhale, front edge of the mat. Inhale all the way to standing. And we again exhale, hands to the heart. 
Okay, so we'll do one of my favorite postures in all of yoga, which is the toe stand. Okay, now again, you have several things you can do here. One is the tree, right? The other one is the bound lotus. And this is the right leg. I'm mirroring you. So this is your right leg, right? And then if you want to do the toe stand, you can inhale those arms up and then exhale yourself down into position. You may have to bring your hands down like I do. It's perfectly fine. Okay, but once you're down, see if you can bring your hands to the heart. Good, with an inhale, as gracefully as you are able, you come back up and exhale, release. Now again, that may be way out of your comfort zone, in which case don't go there today. Do whatever takes you slightly out, but not too far out. Again, everyone's point is different. That's why I teach different options, different variations. If everyone were the same, then we would just have one option and everyone would immediately find their edge. But that's just not the way it is. So you need to explore in your practice where your edge is. Good. We inhale back up and exhale, release. And then from the front edge of our mat, inhale, arms up. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, crow, or maybe handstand. And you exhale right to the bottom of a push up. Good. So we're moving right along here. Let's look at our last of the side plank variations. Feet touching, we roll to the left. Okay, now again, you can do any of the variations looked at. The one now is called a starfish, which looks like that. Good, let's exhale the hand to the ground, the foot between the hands. Again, we're in a lunge. I'm gonna turn just for the camera, so you do not need to turn. Good, we inhale to a skandasana. Exhale to the other side of the mat. Inhale to a crescent lunge. Exhale to a warrior two. Inhale to this, which is called stupa, which is kind of a neutral position. We exhale to warrior two, facing back, right? And then we inhale to crescent, and we exhale the hands down. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Inhale to skandasana again. Exhale to the back of the mat. Inhale to crescent lunge. Exhale to warrior two. Inhale to stupa, exhale, warrior two, facing front. Inhale to crescent lunge, facing front, and exhale the hands down. One more time. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Inhale to skandasana. Exhale, low lunge at the back of the mat. Inhale, high lunge. Exhale, warrior two. Now listen carefully, inhale to stupa, okay? Walk your feet out to a comfortable distance and have the inside edges of the feet parallel or you can point the big toes slightly toward one another, okay? And then from there, exhale, fold forward. And this is called um, Prasarita Padottanasana, okay? So 
try and bring a nice straight spine, crown of the head toward the ground, legs wide, feet apart, walking your hands back. Find that stretch, breathe into it. Good. We inhale, come all the way back up. Again, you might need to heel toe your feet in a little bit. We exhale, warrior two facing front. Inhale to crescent and exhale, bottom of your push up, making your way to down dog. Okay, let's do the other side. All right, so feet touch. We come into our side plank right here. Okay, and then we can lift this top leg for starfish if that's our edge. Good, exhale and lunge. Again, I will turn just for the camera. You should, you do not need to turn. Okay, so imagine I just put my foot here and then I inhale, skandasana. Exhale to the back of the mat. Inhale to a crescent lunge. Exhale to warrior two. Inhale to stupa. Exhale to warrior two. Facing front, inhale. Crescent lunge, facing front. Exhale the hands down. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Inhale, skandasana. Good, exhale back of the mat. Inhale, crescent lunge. Good, exhale, warrior two. Inhale, stupa. Exhale, warrior two facing front. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, left leg up and back one more time. Exhale, lunge. Inhale, skandasana. Exhale, back of the mat. Inhale, high lunge. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, stupa. Now listen carefully. Again, heel toe those feet out. Inside edges parallel. And then exhale to prasarita parottanasana. Now, since this is the second time, you might want to go a little deeper. A few ways you can do that is simply walk yourself in deeper. Another is take your legs wider. Still another is maybe interlace those fingers behind your back, open up the shoulders a bit. And still one other way is you grab the big toes and you use those arms to coax you a little further into it. Good. Let's inhale back up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale to crescent lunge. And we exhale those hands, bottom of the push up, making our way to down dog. Okay. From here, let's inhale to the toes. We exhale, front edge of the mat. Let's inhale up to standing. And we'll exhale our hands to the heart. Okay, so we have a lot of poses we've learned in this position. The tree, right? The forward fold with the bind, um, the toe stand, right? So I have one more option for you. Um, and again, only if you're looking for more challenge. Okay, and this is a type of arm balance. I bring the leg into the same position that we've done. So again, this is my left leg, but it should be your right leg. So I'm mirroring you. We inhale those arms up, exhale forward fold. And then what I'd like to do is rest my shins on the back of my arms. Notice I'm not changing this leg. It's still bound here. I just bring my shins to the back of my arms. My arms are bent. I look forward 
and then I shift weight off of my foot onto my arms. And then at some point, I'll turn again for the sake of the camera. At some point, you might feel that it's okay for you to lift the toes up. So that's a type of crow pose that's called Ardha Padma Bakasana, half bound lotus or half lotus uh, crow pose. Let's try the other side. It is asymmetrical. So we bring this foot in, okay, like so. And then again, there are lots of things you can do from this position. It doesn't have to be this. But if you'd like to try it, come down. And again, I recommend you try it if all the other options are relatively easy. Even if they're not easy, as long as you feel that this would be safe to try. Again, one of the big things we need to look out for as human beings is this idea that we need to be perfect. And so, so many of us are afraid of making mistakes. So we just don't do anything that we think we can't do perfectly. Or if we are afraid we're going to make a mistake, we just don't even try. So some people don't even fall in love because of, because of that. They keep themselves closed off their whole life. Okay, let's make our way onto our back. Let's just relax, take it easy. Hmm. From there you can bring those legs in. Move around a little bit, shake it off. And then with the arms out at the side, we drop those knees to the left. So we look to the right. Just letting the breath be natural now. Good, we inhale those knees through center, take them off to the other side. Good. We inhale the knees back to center. If you can grab your feet, you can also hold behind the knees. And just move around a little bit. You can try extending the legs one at a time or both together. Take your time. And when you're ready to unwind onto your back, you can just unwind. Set a timer for six minutes. Close your eyes and just relax in that stillness for six minutes. <sighs> 